am a super fan of tonight's guest. She is a brilliant country artist who was a successful chef, a drunk, and a junkie when she hit bottom on the floor of a prison cell at the age of 27. Please welcome my amazing friend, Mary Gaucher. I would say you have a country artist's wet dream of a tragic story. So uh, could you tell us about your life and, and how it led you to music? Well, yeah, I got sober at 27. Um, I started uh, being able to speak in full sentences at 30. <laughs> and um, I, uh, I started uh, hearing songs and, and feeling a pull towards songwriting. And by the time I was 35, I was playing uh, open mics, trying to get the songs uh, in front of an audience to see if, uh, if they sucked or not, really. Um, it's funny because you are one of the most hopeful, joyful people that I've ever met, and your songs uh, are make you want to kill yourself. So <laughs> do you think there's a connection between those things? Yeah, you know, when I feel like I write a song. It's how it works for me. I, uh, I use the... It's a guitar. <laughs> I, I call it the money maker. I use the money maker <laughs> to, um, to help me articulate what's going on, and then I inflict it on people, and some people like it, and it helps them to, to understand that what they're feeling, at least one other person has felt, and there's something about it that really... <laughs> Works. Yeah. Now let's get deep into this. So, Mercy Now, Rolling Stone called Mercy Now the saddest song ever written, and it is. It's funny because um, we've all been listening to your music all week, and, and one of the writers, Deanna Reasonover, said, your music made her so depressed, she had to listen to Morrissey to cheer up. <laughs> so, what inspired Mercy Now, and will you sing some for us? Thank you. Yes, of course I will. Uh, I wrote that on a bad day. I was having um, trouble in my career, uh, and I felt like I wasn't getting what I deserved. And I was talking to somebody in recovery and uh, expressing that feeling. Uh, my friend reminded me, Mary, um, it would be good to remember that given the behaviors you've exhibited in your life, you really don't want what you truly deserve, do you? And I'm like, oh, you're right. And it, it, a light bulb went in, and it became, oh, I don't really want what I deserve. Uh, uh, thank you. I'm good. <laughs> uh -huh. And then it, I realized, oh, my God, what if the churches got what they deserve based on some of the worst days of their life? What if America got what it deserved based on some of the worst days of, of, of her life? What if any of us? And, and so that's where the idea is. It started to come in that, to, well, instead of getting what I deserved, I, I think maybe I would prefer a little mercy now. Uh, and it flipped, and it, it turned into uh, to this. So, uh, so, um... My father, he could use a little mercy now. The fruits of his labor falling right slowly on the ground. His work is almost over. Won't be long, he won't be around. I love my father. He could use some mercy now. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. I'm plotting over here. Uh. Um. You describe yourself as an outsider. So tell me the experience of, of, you know, performing at the Grand Ole Opry at places that are so kind of tradition-based or traditional. Well, I'm 
pretty good at splitting an audience in half, kind of like Moses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, some will and some won't. I, I don't obviously look like the other girls at the Opry. So uh, there's a challenge just by my physical appearance for me being there. Um, but an awful lot of folks will, and, uh, and those are the ones I'm after. I think it's progress that, you know, a big queer could be on the Opry and survive it. <laughs> yeah. So you've been working with veterans now in this, the past couple of years on this project on an album, and uh, you have an album coming out in a couple months called Rifles and Rosary Beads, and you're basically, you co-wrote songs with veterans. So tell me all about it. Yeah, thanks for asking. I'm working with an organization called Songwriting with Soldiers. And what we do is pair up uh, professional songwriters with, uh, with uh, veterans, people who've served, and sometimes their wives and sometimes their families. Uh, and we get songs from their experiences. Uh, and um, to, to, to try to describe it shortly is so hard. Um, for me to say uh, anything in, 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 in a small way about it is, is, is challenging because it's so moving. All right. Um, but I got this thing here where I can go, well, if you don't know what, Again, what to say. Again, it's called a guitar. Well, oh it's, this, God, it's this magic thing. I can play notes and it helps them to go, yeah, that's how I feel. What I'm interested in when I'm working with veterans is getting a really good song for them. Your experience, their experience. Their words, their experience. I'd love to hear a little of one of the songs which I got to hear um, called Bullet Holes in the Sky. So, um, this is a veteran sitting in the Waffle House on Veterans Day. Because if you have a military ID, they give you free breakfast at the Waffle House on Veterans Day. It's the 11th of November down in Nashville, Tennessee. Free breakfast at the Waffle House. If I show my ID, I parade up on the riverfront, you can hear trumpets play. Hands on hearts, the color guard kicks it off on Veterans Day. And they thank for my service and wave their little flags. They genuflect on Sundays, and yes, they'd send us back. But I believe in God and country and in the angels up on high and in heaven shining down on us through bullet holes in the sky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mary Gauthier, thank you so much for coming. I adore you.